Um, so as Rich mentioned, I work in research and development at Jardu. And our mission for the last 12 months has been around bringing intelligence services within the platform. So what I've been doing for around the last six months is I've been going on a mini chatbot UK tour and stopping around and visiting a bunch of people, a few people that I can see in the room today, actually. Um, and really listen to your stories about intelligence services and what your requirements are um, for when they arrive. And I heard some really interesting things. And luckily, a lot of things that chimed in the same way. There was a, a consistent message. And that was often that we had areas in the business which were receiving a high volume of transactions um, with in departments where resources were thin and, and likely getting a little thinner. So we set ourselves the mission and tried to figure out where we can provide the most value by bringing intelligence services into the platform. So today I'm just going to start us off and set a little bit of context by giving us a little bit of a where we're at with chatbots in 2019. Uh, what's changed and what have we learned since uh, we last spoke, which I think was back in London uh, at Christmas time. So I'm gonna start off with just a couple of facts and figures which I've got from a few different reports and a few different sources. Uh, and let's get an idea of, of where we stand right now. So Accenture in uh, 2018 surveyed the general public and found that 54% of people are now saying that they're willing to have AI services delivered by local government, uh, which I think is a really promising number, as we know that for a lot of people, this is quite a contentious and divisive subject. And we can expect that number to creep up as well once we start delivering valuable intelligent services. Open text in the same year, polled people and asked them, what areas of value do we think are gonna be delivered by intelligent services? And the top two percentiles there was 18.4% of people were expected to have reduced waiting times. And we can see how that maps across. So that's whether I log on to a website and I can interact immediately with the chatbot through a web interface, or whether I have my phone call answered on the first ring because we've got chatbots deployed inside virtual contact centers through integrations such as Amazon Connect. This next one, we've got some figures down to the, the brass tacks. And I just briefly want to talk about the source of this information first. So this is the local digital chatbots project, which was a discovery project looking at chatbots within local government. And some of you may have actually been involved in that project in the room. I know, I think we have Neil Lawrence, uh, second shout out of the keynote, <laughs> he's doing well today. Um, and I'd love to have a chat with Neil later because I'm sure you've got some really valuable information on this subject. So they actually identified that web self-service uh, was roughly around two to 3% of the cost of the existing channels. And when expanding that figure out across all councils in England, dealing with calls that they predicted that chatbots could answer, which I believe was roughly around 14%, they estimated that there's around 48 million pounds worth of calls that could be currently dealt with by a chatbot or an intelligent service. So I think you'd agree that that's quite impressive. There's absolutely savings to be made in this area. However, with that said, what I've come here today is to tell you why we at Jardu think that these services are important. And that's put simply accessibility. It's baked into everything we do at Jardu, and it's going to be a word that you're going to hear a lot across the rest of the day. We've got some really great talks coming up. Accessibility is baked into Jardu, and it's at the core of everything we do. It's right in our prime directives, designing with standards, semantics, and then users in mind. That's not a directive that we added recently. It's been there since day one. All of our software that is and will be has always been designed with accessibility in mind. And it's really important to us. And that's whether it's Paul Stanton or James Jacobs and the Pulsar team, who are constantly and tirelessly putting in effort to audit the existing platform and make sure we meet the highest of accessibility standards, not only in the UK now, but also internationally. 
or whether it's Jack and the spacecraft team and yourselves as content managers who are now not only winning awards for design, but also for accessibility, which are two areas that have commonly never shared the same space. It was sort of one or the other, but we're now blending the two and getting both. So to bring that back round into intelligent services and where we see the future, is that we feel there's a lot of power in delivering these intelligent services and that in the long term, they're actually going to make our services more accessible than they've ever been. By integrating with partners such as AWS, we can bring the powers of things like smart tech and Alexas and speakers right into the hands of you. So you can start designing your services with those in mind. Uh, recently this year, I uh, was down in Herefordshire uh, Herefordshire, are you in the house? Andy, I, I thought I recognised you. Uh, they were really kind and invited me down to Herefordshire, which was a lovely place, great cider. And <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that. I didn't drink any cider whilst I was down there, uh, Sarajan Rich. <laughs> um, and we had a chat about intelligent services uh, down there. And they told me a really heartwarming story of where they were actually planning to put this smart tech and these assistive devices inside the homes of elderly and the most vulnerable citizens. And this really chimes with our message, and that's really where we see the future. The savings aside, making our services accessible to the most vulnerable people in society is really what's driving us at the moment. And, and those are the people where the web is still not an accessible place. So being able to reach them is, is really cool, and like I say, it's a testament to the work that Hope and Shira are doing over there. And we're hoping to support them on that journey. So let's talk about technology, and that is the CXM Lex integration. So we've spoke about this at a few academies in the past, or I may have even come and spoken to you directly about it. So I'm not gonna go into too much details about the specifics of that integration today. I'm just gonna give you the three problems that we're trying to solve, and then I'm gonna show you some videos and, and do a couple of demos as well to give you an idea of what we've got in the works. So the problems that we're trying to solve is number one, low code. A phrase that you're gonna hear a lot throughout today, it's the philosophy. We're designing the integration from the ground up to be simple. We know that one of the hardest parts of getting intelligent services within our organization is knowing where to start. There's so many options and there's so many technical barriers that we need to cross and get over before we can even start thinking about our service design. So we're hoping to break down those barriers and by solving those technical challenges, have you jump in on chatbots and assistive technology straight into the optimizing and design phase, the bit that you're all experts at. And we'll take care of the technical details to make sure that we don't need any developer resource so we don't have to write any code, unless we want to, to make these things work. The second, contextual training data. Now, if you play in Mike Smart Bingo, there's almost certainly a square on there that says contextual training data that you can tick off now. I say this a lot, and I often talk about it a lot at Academy. In fact, I think it was a year ago in Birmingham that we first came out and spoke about this. And we did a whole talk on the importance of training data in artificially intelligent systems. It's paramount to the success of any intelligent service that the training data that is used is quality and that there's a good amount of it. It's all very well and good that Amazon, things like the Amazon Alexa and other Apple Siri and things like that, which come out of the box and they know how to recognize airports and pizza toppings. And it makes for some great demos when we see them. However, we don't deal in those subjects we're in the business of garden waste. We're in the business of dead pets. We're in the business of potholes. They're less glamorous subjects. However, no less important to us in our day-to-day -day business. Our intelligent services need to know about those things. Otherwise, they're never gonna be able to recognize them when they're coming in. So luckily, Amazon gives us a facility to actually train these machines on that data. So with the CXM Lex integration, we're going to take your actual data from CXM, your real pothole inquiries, your real Greenway subscription forms, and we're going to train these artificially intelligent systems 
on the data that your citizens are giving. So not only does that mean that we have a vast quantity of training data, it also means that our training data is aware of local aspects, such as terminology, dialects, and the demographics of people that actually use our services. So we're augmenting the existing intelligent tech and we're inserting all of our information that's gonna make them even smarter when they're out there answering the phones or chatting with people online. And finally, the end-to-end -end transactions. So we're taking care of the plumbing from, C from CXM into AWS. We're going to sync across your existing case types into AWS. So to get you over that first initial technical barrier, but then we're also going to take care of the return journey as well. So our chatbots can actually perform transactions and raise cases on behalf of the members of the public. So with that integration taken care of, that means that users can truly self-serve and that those queries can then filter through our existing case type and workflows that we've already set up in CXM. Okay, so the first little demo, I've got some videos here, and this is of my local development environment. Um, so a small caveat, this is unreleased work, but I wanted to show it you working today. Uh, so if you see any T's that aren't crossed or any I's that aren't dotted, then rest assured that they'll all be crossed and dotted uh, for release. Uh, but I wanted to give you an idea of what this actually looks like in CXM. So how do I get set up? If I have CXM, how do I create a chatbot and, and what problems are we really solving? So it's going to exist in our system settings. And we're going to go over to the integrations hub. Now this may look familiar if you've ever configured an integration before. This is where you find all of our CXM integrations. So this should look fairly familiar. We've just got to put in some information so AWS knows who we are. Uh, that includes uh, just those passwords there and a region. And then the next one down there is the user. So this is the user that's going to raise cases and perform transactions on behalf of our chatbot. So I've created a, a robot user there who's going to be raising my cases. Then once that's saved, we're going to head over to the intent section. And intent is something that a chatbot can do. So these are the actions that it can perform. So in our version one that we're going to ship, our chatbot is going to be able to raise cases on our behalf. So it's going to show me my valid case forms, which in this case is reporting a new pothole. And then I'm going to go and map over my field. So it's pulled through my create a pothole case form fields here. And now I'm going to map them to a language that AWS understands. So for our specific data, we're going to use custom types. But Amazon handily comes with some built-ins as well. So we can use Amazon's email address. And we've created some custom slot types for our data that Amazon doesn't know about. So CXM is now going to go off in the background and start creating services in AWS and start training those services on our data. And then once I refresh there, we should see our status go to ready. Awesome. So we can jump into the AWS dashboard at this point, right from with inside CXM. And there we have it. So this is now my AWS account that was previously blank which is now set up and contains all of the information from my existing case type. I didn't need to copy anything across. I've, we've now synced it across automatically. So we've crossed that first hurdle of getting started. And as you can see, that was a successful build, which is a good start. And this is an example of that real data that's been pulled through from my CXM account. So these are the slot types, and these are the types of information we're expecting to receive. And as you can see, the data has actually been pulled across from CXM. So they're pre-trained and you're ready to go. You can jump right into refinement and optimizing at this point and can start chatting with it right away. So hopefully that's pretty cool. In less than about two and a half minutes there, we got set up with a chatbot in AWS. So we've done this and we've showed this uh, before and when we've been out demoing, we've done some live demos of that and it's worked almost every time. And <laughs> almost. <laughs> the one time I went with Rich, it didn't work. Okay, and that was the. That, I'm sure that was a problem with the internet. <laughs> I'm going to blame Clav. <laughs> so, um, what I want to show you is the bigger picture, right? So, give me the vertical slice. What does this actually mean for end users? What What does this technology give us the ability to do? 
So I've got a video here. I set myself the challenge. Well, I say I set it. Rich told me to do this. <laughs> uh, so a couple of days ago, I um, put myself in your shoes and I started using the existing channels uh, that Amazon Lex supports out of the box and using that exact same chatbot, which I just set up in the previous video, I deployed it live and here's a video of that working. So to break this down, on the left hand side, that's my, or your right hand side, that's my, uh, no, your left hand side, that's my phone, <laughs> sending a text message. Uh, at the top, that's Slack, our instant messaging platform that the Jardu forum is powered by. On the right hand side, that's a local CMS instance with a widget on the front, which I'm chatting to. And at the bottom there is our AWS dashboard, which is where we just left off. And this is the same chatbot powering all of these channels. So I'm having a little chat with it there. It's getting all of the relevant information that it needs to create a pothole case. Then once it has all that, it's going to ask me whether it'd like me to take action on that. And this was really difficult to sync all of these up at the same time. <laughs> so once it's happy, it's going to raise a case. It's going to give me my reference. And it's also going to give me a link through to CXM so I can go and check it out. So as I go through to all of these different links on all of my various channels, I get taken right into CXM, and my robot user has set up a CXM case. So with using all of these different channels, without any human interaction, I managed to raise a case on CXM through a channel that already existed, that I already had. And so to break those down, that was raising cases with instant messages, which is powered by Lex and Slack, as I mentioned, which the Jardu customer forum is currently powered by. Raising a case through conversation on a CMS page using a widget. And that widget actually supports uh, voice as well. You should see a little microphone on there. I can speak to that widget as well as chat with it. And that's powered by Lex and the Jardu CMS. And one that really excited me was raising a case by SMS. And that's powered by Lex and Twilio. These are all built in to Lex's platform. And aside from the CMS widget, which I had to build in around a day, these took me less than half an hour to get set up with. It was just a case of creating accounts in these service providers and just linking the details to my Lex account. So without even having the internet, I was able to raise a case about a pothole on a channel that has existed for me ever since I had a phone. So I hope that's looking pretty exciting. And this power really is going to be within your CXM accounts really soon. So we're looking towards the end of the year to release version one, which is going to have you creating cases using chatbots. And in line with that, we've got a webinar uh, just in case you wanted to hear more from me about this subject, we're going to give you the opportunity and I'm going to host a webinar, uh, which we're penciling in for October at the minute. Uh, so do sign up. I'm sure we'll be tweeting that link, uh, but you can sign up from that today. Get yourself a place and we're going to dive deeper because at that point, it should already be in your CXM accounts or will certainly be imminent. So we can go down into more of the details of this integration and how your teams can get set up in starting to design these services. Okay, that's all me done. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, you guys have been great. If anyone's got any questions, uh, I'm more than happy to field them now, if we've got some time. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you very Cheers much, Mark. Thank you. <laughs>